Hey guys, Ink Mage here, and I'm from upstate New York, and in the Northeast, fall is a big deal. The leaves are changing, there's apple picking, apple cider donuts, apple cider, apple everything, and we love it in this area. So I began a new campaign for my Friday night group set in autumn, two weeks out before the Great Harvest Festival. I was looking for a perfect place to pick up from the last adventure I ran, which took two weeks, and I wanted to find something that I could do in a single night. I went searching the DMs Guild and found something called Bad Apples. It was perfect for me because it was set prior to a harvest festival. I could run it in one night and it tied in perfectly with what happened previously in my game. So the basic premise for Bad Apples is that bandits seeking a lair to hole up in go to an orchard owned by a man named Newton Tell, and they kill him. But his vengeful spirit comes to life, and that combined with some mishaps with his interest in alchemy bring to life some creatures on his property. To put my players in the festive mood of the upcoming Harvest Festival, I adorned my DM screen with some lights, as well as put some up over where I keep some of my maps and minis. This is a tavern in the village where they live and it's called All the Luck in the World. The adventure began here only because they had to confront a rival adventurer named Chilton Gaines that they have some problems with. After that confrontation, the players decided to strike out for Newton Tell's orchard. Along the way, they encountered the remains of the bandits who fled from the vengeful spirit. Those bandits made an offer uh, to uh, give the players information as well as collect some gold. It rapidly descended into some combat where some of the players were down, four of the bandits were down, and then negotiations resumed. An equitable agreement was made. The bandits provided information that was much needed, letting them know that something was amiss, that there was some strange force attacking and killing them after they killed the orchard owner. And so the players then moved on after uh, being relieved of some of their gold. <laughs> For the encounter with the bandits on the road, I used a map from Wizards of the Coast called the King's Road. I've gotten a lot of mileage out of this great map. I've laminated it so that it can be reused again and again. Since the players are only second level, I didn't want to have a bandit captain face them with a lot of bandits. I put together eight bandits, which makes up a challenge rating one for the players. And I used this cool Reaper mini along with some WizKids and old school D&D minis to make up the bandits that they faced. This was a fun encounter filled with lots of role-playing, exciting combat, and then more role-playing. When the players reach the orchard, they first come to a bridge. Uh, there are a couple of bodies beneath the bridge. For these, I use these old tokens that Wizards of the Coast put out for D&D 4th Edition, and I use, there were a couple straw men effigies that are actually animated, and I used, again, these WizKid straw men uh, scarecrow minis. Let's see if I can get a focus on that. Scarecrow. Now, when the players approach, if they try and cross the bridge, the scarecrows come alive and attack them. If they spend time down investigating, the scarecrows attack them. The mistake I think I'm... What I would recommend, and I didn't do, would be to have both of them on the far side of the bridge, as opposed to spacing them out. There are a lot of areas in the orchard to explore. Now, I don't have a lot of trees, nor do I have enough space on my table, and I've got a big table, to have every area covered. So I set this up to represent the different places that they could explore and just recycled it. One of the neat things my wife suggested is the great thing about using one of the Paizo uh, flip maps is that you can put dry erase on it. So my wife suggested I put little marks to represent apples that have fallen. That was very clever. And I use some more scarecrows, including this great old scarecrow from Wizards of the Coast, Scarecrow Stalker. 
love that guy. He's very spooky. And they were only actual scarecrows. There were other encounters to be had in here. I don't like to railroad my players, and as much as I wanted them to explore the orchards and get some of the goodies and learn things, I didn't force it. The only thing they ended up encountering in the orchard on their own, because they were very nervous and wanted to go straight through to the mill, were a couple zombies. And I used this straw zombie that my brother gave me because the look the arm is missing but i still think that's pretty cool i used one of these pathfinder zombies from the undead horde collection the adventure when they reach the mill in the area there are several storage sheds and a stable and then the mill itself i got rid of one of the storage sheds just again to conserve space it really didn't do anything to advance the story you can, and this is one of the things I love with taking adventures and mining it. You can make it your own. You can do what you want. Your players don't know the difference and you can still have a great time. So I'm going to take you through the area of the mill and show you what I did and talk about what happened with them. So here is the mill compound. The glare, by the way, just comes from my overhead lights. So please ignore that. When they explored the stables, they found a starving horse, Jasper, that they tried to calm down. One of the players got kicked. They decided to try and find some food for him, and tearing open these bags, they found a bunch of apples. However, those apples spilled forth because they were these creatures called apple blights, and the apple blights began to attack. Now, the party was split up. Others were over here at the mill itself, opening the door and inspecting. Now, I took some artistic liberties with representing the mill as opposed to how it is in the book, but it still captures the flair and the, and the spirit. I used some unpainted pieces from my mill. You can see the mill over there that I haven't yet painted, and I will, and we'll talk about that in another video, to create an apple press. And these pieces, again, with the mill, are from uh, the Arcania Workshop on Etsy. I also picked up from them these awesome keg stands, and so I painted those up, and those are filled with apple cider and... So this is basically the workshop for it. This is the study. I have some terrain crate furniture in there, some painted, some not, to represent his study where he works on his alchemical formulas to help his orchard. And then, let's see, I'll take that out of there for a second, I'll show you. Here's his bedroom, and again, I have some Arcania workshop nightstands and a bed and a wardrobe as well as a whiz kids mirror and This is actually from a little Harry Potter set that I painted up I have some tiny furniture there as well speaking of tiny furniture here is an alchemy cabinet and it was filled with potions and some of the potions spilled animating it so when the characters came over I used this animated door from WizKids. I know it's not a cabinet, but I could move it around to show that it came to life and it was attacking them and hurling potions at them. The pieces making up the actual structure itself are some Dwarven Forge. This is from Dungeon of Doom, but then you have some regular pieces as well as city builder pieces and some castle builder pieces. And look at this. So I'm making use of quite a bit of terrain and set dressing from a lot of sources to flush it out and make it look good. Let's go on over because I really, really love this. It is an Arcania workshop again on Etsy. Uh, the link will be in the description. And here is the well that I painted up. Just love that. I'm going to use that almost all the time. Here was an area they never explored using some city builder stuff from Dwarven Forge, it was just a, a dry storage shed. Later, they came to the apple shed. Now, here we are. One of the barrels was corroded because there was an alchemical mishap that changed the cider into an ochre jelly. And these are what I use to represent the apple blights because they're these tiny little apple-sized creatures. So let me get a little closer, you can see. They're just little Lego pieces. And I spilled them out. A fun, freaky little monster that spooked the players out. And again, look at my base. I just used 
a Paizo map. And this one, let's see, what's on the other side? Oh, this is the Bandit Outpost map. But more often than not, I use this side because it's just a nice green side with a little bit of a uh, road, perhaps. And everybody always asks me about the trees. I just ordered these. I don't even know where on Amazon. I just order them and I haven't really finished them off as well as I should, but I glued them onto bases and they look good. I have these big trees also from Amazon. I use some Aranthor Mountain Pieces from Dwarven Forge. Lots of opportunity when you mix and match your terrain to create something that I think looks pretty good. The characters didn't do everything I thought they would do. They didn't play out the adventure the way the adventure is written. They seldom do, and that's okay. Allowing them to explore and do it in their own way helps them feel that they are in a world where they can make a difference as opposed to being railroaded. In the end, they made peace with the vengeful poltergeist of Newton Tell, and he helped them find the other treasure and collect it, things that belong to him, because they're hoping that they can help him and bring him back, which now has set up new adventure possibilities that is driven forward by the player characters rather than me. Now, I take cues from my players and, and have to create an adventure based on what they want to do. So if you're looking for a fall time adventure for a one shot in your campaign, particularly around a harvest festival, I hope you'll give uh, Bad Apples a shot. I hope this helps you if you decide to run it and taking a look at how you could modify things or what you could use to bring it to life. If you enjoyed this, please comment, like, share, and subscribe for extra XP. Until next time, I'll catch you later.